Go ahead. Want you to hand there? I thought a couple of these were really tricky. I thought part D on number one was difficult. The last one, the last one was very tricky and adding in that initial amount. Um, yeah. Yeah. Say that again. How do you know it's point? Okay, so tell me why you think you would include a T in there. I wouldn't put a T in there unless they unless they give you the equation. If they just straight up tell you the rate is bleh, then take it for what it is. Um, I was seeing um two D was also tricky. Yeah, this is the, I did it a different way, but I didn't. I went from zero to eight on both of them. Because I didn't read the. That's fine. Yeah, I think so. Y'all got your bounds right on your integrals on part D? I missed that. Okay. All right, let's look at number one at least. How about questions about number one? Did you, I hope y'all are reaming some pros now. You what? Yeah. <laughs> Do you forget like how to? Yeah, left reaming some use the left value. Right reaming some use the right value. All right, so you're always using the y values, right? The y values are your height, and then how far they span is the difference in your x's. So if I'm doing left Riemann sum, I know I'm doing 50.3, and I'm multiplying that by, and I, I still always do this. I, I draw it so I know what my rectangles are. One, two, and three. That way I can see. This first one, I'm using 50.3, but it's spanning from zero to two, so that would be times two. You did trap rule? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yes, take a picture of it so you can upload your. Or you can leave. I know you got to go. You can do it tomorrow. Yes, yes. Um, do you need me to finish work on this one? It, it upgraded. Yeah, it does look weird. It gets in the way, too. Um, so if you keep going, of course, I mean, y'all have the answers there on, on what you need to do. Make sure you have your units correct. So you got two points for that one, one for the Riemann sum and one for the approximation. And then if you look at the top there on the right, you get a point for having the units correct in parts A, C, and D. Even if the answer is not right, it just says units, so yeah. So if you look at look at your table to start with, it's in square feet, right? Every time you take a derivative, it adds another, think about it adding another exponent onto, like if I had, if that's feet squared, then the derivative would be feet cubed, and then the next derivative is going to be... They are estimating the volume. They are actually, okay, I said that wrong. This is going to be, no, I said that wrong. I would, when you do a derivative, it adds another per to it, right? But this is not derivatives. This is integrals. So it's kind of taking one of those pers away. This is kind of hard to 
explain it. That this is the way I did. I thought I know that the integral of area gives me volume always. This is always area is always in square whatever, square inches, square feet, square miles, square whatever, and volume's always in cubes. Because remember, volume, think about area, length times width, that's two. Volume would be length times width times height, there's three of those, so it's cubed. That that's that's how I remember those. Are integrals. They're integrals, right. They are estimates of the integral there. Because they're estimates of area under the curve, right? They take a curve and they break it up into these little rectangles, so you're estimating these areas under the curve, which is an integral. All right, any questions about B? I think you have to say that because you have to understand because otherwise, yeah, yeah. So that's what they're looking for. If they ever ask for a justification for over or underestimate, they're looking for you to say the function is either increasing or decreasing, therefore a left ram would be bleh or whatever it is. So because this is decreasing, a left ram would be an overestimate. And I drew a little, on the side of my paper, I drew a little example because it's hard for me to remember, but it's easy to just sketch something real quick. And then I can see. Yes, it's always, you're always going to start because the function is whatever it is and then state what it's doing. And even if you don't remember that rule, if you sketch a little picture and you see. Yeah. What was your reason? Read me your reason. I would say I'd probably give you that, yeah. Um, part D on number one, is that what you said? Okay. Here's, I did number, I, I'm not going to lie, I wouldn't have got the points for D because I went through, I just, my brain wasn't wrapping around it right. All right, water is pumped into the tank. Um, when the height of the water is 5 feet, the height is increasing. So when H equals 5, the height is increasing. So, and I did put this, I said, okay, well then I know DHDT is 0.26 feet per minute. Using the model from part C, so it's telling me to look back at part C. So I went back and looked at my part C. What did I have? For part C, I did an integral, but it also it gave me this f of h equals 50.3 over e to the point t h plus h. All right, so using the model from part C, find the rate at which the volume of water is changing with respect to time. So then I knew this is where I have all this. I need um, dvdt because I need the rate at which the volume of water is changing with respect to time. I need dvdt when h equals five. And so I had all this. I had. I don't know what I was thinking on here because it really wasn't that hard. It just threw me for a loop when I did it. So. How am I going to find dvdt? Well, the first thing I need is the volume equation, and that's where I use part. So I'm not actually using, I am and I'm not. I said that I know in part C that the volume, because it said to estimate the volume, right? The volume is the integral of f of h, right? Are you all with me there? Okay, so... If I wanted dv dt, and I went through initially and I was solving, I was finding the integral of this whole thing and trying to do it, and I was like, Stacy, you're being ridiculous because it's a calculator problem. Clearly, I'm going to use my calculator somewhere. What in the world do I need to do? 
Well, if I take the derivative of this with respect to t, right? A derivative essentially cancels this out. The problem is my variable in here is h and not t. So I can say this is f of h, but then I have to chain it with a dh dt. Remember whenever we take the derivative of y with respect to x, we just do the plain old derivative, but we follow it with a dy dx. You know what I'm talking about whenever we're doing implicit differentiation? It is the exact same thing. Yeah, no problem. Does that make sense? Now it's just a plug and chug thing because I can use my calculator. This is probably still in your y1. And it's so dv dt when h equals 5 is whatever this comes out to be times dh dt. And they gave me dh dt, right? The HDT was 0.26. Comes out to 1.694 cubic feet per minute. I got it wrong initially. Whenever I saw that it was wrong, I did figure out how to do it. By the 0.26. That was initially what I didn't do either because I was like, eh, I forgot to with respect to T. It's kind of fuzzy. Yeah. Well, because what we're doing here, if you think about it like, think about it as taking the derivative, taking the derivative. Right? Because this is the derivative of V. It's just with respect. So these essentially cancel out. The problem is because I'm doing it with respect to T and there's no T in this equation. How many points should I get on that one? Oh, that's amazing. That's awesome. That's okay. I felt like this was a hard exam. All right, y'all okay? How about number two? I think I have more notes on number two than what I had work on number two whenever I started going. Because I, I was get I get myself so worked up whenever I have these multiple I equations. Yeah. <laughs> so I I mean I was underlying I underlining I knew that there was fifty pounds to start with. I wanted to make sure I understood that those were rates. I circled the word rate so I wouldn't forget. And then if this helps you do it if it doesn't fine y'all know i'm very weird um i literally wrote beside the equation so i knew i'd end up going back i wrote remove i wrote add and i even wrote after three hours and didn't adjust my integral to after three hours like an idiot um but just to get a handle on the problem and what was going on all right um let's see yes some Okay, so if you did, so part C says, is the number of pounds of bananas on the table increasing or decreasing at time t equals 5? Okay, so you did, you did the integral, is that what you said? Yes, because that's just going to tell you whenever you add the 50 pounds into that also. That's actually what you're doing for part D. Because that's telling you how many pounds are out there at that particular time. To know if it's increasing or decreasing, what I really need is the rate. Because the rate tells me, right? The rate tells me if that slope is positive or negative. Is there, or is there less or is there more coming in? So that's why you had to do... It's a little confusing because that's why I circled right on this one. It's very confusing when they give you the derivative, but it's not marked as a derivative. So you have to understand that F and G, right, because you don't realize. You don't realize, oh, wait, this, this is the derivative is what I'm fine, is what I'm given to start with. 
So going backwards would give me the pounds, and going forward would give me the right of the right. If that makes sense. Is this the one where you had to explain the um, the right of the right at some point? Yeah, on part B, when you found the derivative. Um, so that can be hard to understand, but when you find the derivative of the derivative, that's the rate that the rate is either increasing or decreasing at that particular point in time. Anything else on number two? Y'all are getting better. You're having less and less questions. You're able to check them yourself now some. How'd y'all do on that one? Four. <laughs> And then you don't know if you should do derivative. And I feel like this one was confusing because it gave you the derivative, but you didn't realize it was the derivative, like I said. All right, three. Three was not your usual. You didn't what? On this this question or on the whole the whole yeah. <laughs> that's okay it's okay it's okay all right this one was tricky I'm not gonna this was I in my opinion this was probably the hardest FRQ set we I'm hoping the last three in this section are the easy ones because usually there's three kind of tough ones and three kind of maybe they just put them all first but great day these were kind of tricky this was a rough exam this is probably one that was curved when they graded it um, normally when they gr give us the graph of the derivative they give us some type of integral that usually says from the zero to h of f of x equals g of x or something along those lines right and we can just plug in they didn't give us that on this one instead this time they give us f of negative two and i'm just going over where i struggled with this where what i thought was difficult about understanding this so if you've got this, that's awesome. All right, so they gave us this kind of initial value, yeah. Okay. Um, so before I started, I was looking at this going, oh my gosh. So I did several things before I started this problem, before I attacked it. I knew that this was a derivative. I went ahead on my graph that looks like this. And I just came in here and calculated some areas because I knew at some point I'm probably going to have to have them. And I have some little arrows. I have four. This I calculated to be negative two pi. That was another place to get you because it's under. I have to make it negative. Um, and then this was three. Just to kind of help so I don't get bogged down in the math part of the problem. Kind of can look at that. And the next thing I did was I said, okay, number one, part A asked me to find f of negative six. Did y'all all get this or did you struggle with this a little bit? Yeah. Okay, so your gut instinct on F, or mine is, okay, I need the integral from, and then I go, wait, negative 6 is an endpoint. I need the integral from what to what. So this is where I have to use this kind of initial piece set up. So what this tells me, and you might want to write this down. This doesn't happen often this way, but it did this time. If f of negative 2 equals 7, then f of x is going to be the integral. I'm going to go from negative 2 to whatever value, I, I called it h on mine for whatever reason. Whatever value here and then to that I'm going to add that initial amount. It's very confusing. Um, so, 
for F, once you have that, if you get that down pat, the rest, I don't know if those of you who got it right did it a different way. Is that the way y'all did it? That got it right? Um, so if you want, you're essentially coming up with this on your own instead of them giving it to you, which again doesn't happen. Usually they give you that. So it's kind of odd that they didn't, but that's okay. So I got from negative 2 to negative 6 f of x dx, and I'm going to add in that plus 7. And then it becomes a lot easier. I can switch those bounds up because it's the wrong way. And I've already marked this on my graph, right? So from negative 2 to negative 6, I mean from negative 6 to negative 2, that's just this triangle that I already marked, which was 4. Because the smaller number wasn't on the bottom, I had to switch them up. Oh, so that's what. Oh, that's what. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. No, sorry. Sorry. Lord, I wrote the wrong stinking thing down. So it should be negative 4 plus 7, which is 3. Or number 2. Whenever it says value, value always means y. And they will do that on multiple choice. They will do that on FRQ. You signed up to register for Central Carolina to attend there this summer or next year. Yeah. Uh, Please report to the lecture hall with your device after the bell. Again, if you signed up to register to attend Central Carolina and take classes there this summer or this coming fall, please report to the lecture hall with your device after the bell rings. Thank you. Okay. So if you follow this, you get 3 for f of negative 6 and 10 minus 2 pi for f of 5. I think that was probably the hardest part, in my opinion, on this one, other than um, part C, you got to make sure you check those endpoints. Remember, absolute means absolutely the highest or lowest point. So you have to check endpoints and places where the derivative was 0. Any other questions on three? Okay, so C asks you for absolute minimum values of F on the closed interval from negative six to five. So anytime you're on a closed interval, you want to make sure you check the endpoints, okay? Because those are going to be, and remember the derivative is going to tell us what the function is doing. So I'm looking at where the derivative is zero which happens at negative 2 and at 2 and then again at the end, right? And so I found that it's positive, negative, positive. So I've got three potential places for, I didn't check all of them like they did. I only checked the three. I checked the two endpoints. So f of negative 6, which I already found in part A, 
f of 5, again, they made me find that in part A, and I wasn't sure why, but then whenever I got to part C, I saw why. And then I checked this minimum value here, f of 2, to see which one gave me the smallest value. And the one with the smallest value would be your absolute minimum value. Uh, yes, yes. Um, but do be careful, like Alex was asking. Um, when it asks you for a minimum value, if you want your answer point, your value, your function value is always y. It occurs at the x value, but the value itself is the y. They do that on multiple choice all the time, and they'll throw the x and the y in there. So you have to know, yeah. Um, no, I think, the, I think that's fine. F prime is above the X size. I think that's fine. Yeah, get your, if you need your folder, grab that. Sorry. I also, on part D, I didn't say the limit, da, 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 I didn't do all that. I just said the left-hand derivative does not equal the right-hand derivative, therefore the derivative does not exist at that point. 